In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a score system. This is not the only way to set up a score system. Um, there are um, other ways to do it. There's a slight downside to this way, which I will explain later. Um, and uh, when you're designing your score system, make sure your points add up to 100 because, you know, when I started out, I just figured all points will be up to 100. And uh, when you play this game on the Apple, it just prints out your scores slash 100 uh, along the top. So make sure that your points add up to 100 so everything kind of makes sense to the player. Uh, now, what we probably want to do is now see when we run in the little test window, it doesn't show us our score anywhere. So let's add um, a function for printing out our score. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go to verbs, I'm type score, and add score to our list of verbs. And then I am um, going to make a function called score. And then let's go to score system, print the score. There we go. So now I should be able to run this and type score. Your score is zero out of 100. Cool. All right. Now let's go back to our game here and figure out what the player is going to get points for. They're going to get points for wearing the crown, having the gold bar, unlocking the box, and eating the sandwich. So there's five things that are four things, four things the player is going to do. So there'll be 25 points each. All right. So let's go to uh, now what we're going to do is make an event that um, calculates the score every every turn. Now th that's the downside to this is that it, it does have the potential to slow down your game a little bit because every time you do something, the game's going to recalculate the score. But this is but this is a very straightforward way to do it. So let's just go with this. I'm going to make an event called calc calc score. I could call it whatever, but at least that you know that name kind of tells us what we're doing. So every turn, the game is going to run this event. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set our score to zero. So let's go into the score system, and I'm going to say set score to zero. Now what we're going to do is check to see has the player done the things that they should get points for. So let's say they had to have the gold bar. Uh, so let's go down to the score system here. Now if you don't see these snippets, then you don't have the latest version of Lantern and uh, if you're on, well, if you're off in the internet world, go download the latest version. If you're at TCD, then uh, copy the latest version off of the T drive, and that will then you will see these. Um, so let's see. Oh, they have to have the gold bar. So let's select this. What does the player get points for having the gold bar? How many points does the player get? Twenty-five. So what the game did. Or what the what Lantern just did for us? What is was it added this variable called gold bar taken points and it set it to zero. So when the game starts, the player um, that 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 variable stores whether or not the player should get those points for taking the gold bar or not. So it starts off being zero. So when we do this check, if gold bar points taken is zero, well then this condition is false and we're not going to add twenty five to the score. So we're only going to add 25 to the score here if the gold bar taken points variable got set to one. How does it get set to one? If the gold bar's location is the player, set the gold bar taken points variable to one. So when the player has that, we're gonna change that variable to a one and now we'll give the player those points. So once the player gets this, these points, they have them forever. You can drop the gold bar again and the player will still get the points. And that's because once we, we never clear this thing, we never set this thing to zero. So let's run this and see what happens. So at every turn, we're gonna say set the score to zero. Is the gold, the bar's location the player? If it is, set this variable to one. And we're gonna say, is that variable set to one? If it is, give the player 25 points. Score, okay, take bar, score. Your score is 25 out of 100. Okay, so see, we got, we got, oh, and then let's dump out our variables. See, gold bar taken points equals one. So if that variable is one, we get the points. If it's zero, we don't get the points, right? And just, um, just to show you that again, gold bar taken points um, is set to zero. And then when we take the bar, 
the gold bar taken points is set to one. Now the the downside to this is that um, like when the player takes the if they're playing in the little terminal here and they take the gold bar, they're not going to get any any indication that their score has gone up. Um, so that's kind of a downside here. Um, let's also then let's look at. What else we've got? It was, we said wearing the crown, right? The score system, award points for wearing something, okay? This is gonna be the, very much the same. Okay, so they have to wear the, oh, I should say, change that. Should say, what do they get points for wearing? It says having. Uh, the crown, how many points does the player get? 25, there we go. Um, I should say wearing, I'll fix that. Uh, if the crown is being worn, then set crown worn points to 1. If crown worn points is set to 1, add 25 to the score. So if we go to our variables here, you can see that we have a variable now called crown worn points, and it starts out being 0. Uh, so let's run this again, and let's see, do I have the crown? Where is the crown? It's probably in the box. Oh, well, that's silly. All right. Um, am I carrying it? No. Um, okay, can I unlock the, the box? I'll follow you. Okay, so let's, uh, I guess in order, where did I put the crown? There we go. The crown is, uh, oh, the crown's off screen. So let me just put the, I'm going to put the crown in the player's inventory. Okay. Crown worn points is one, uh, is zero. How does that get set to one? It gets set to one when the player's wearing the crown. Uh, oh, for the love of God. Okay, hang on. Let's... Wearable. Wear crown. You put on the crown. Let's look at our variables. Crown worn points got set to 1, so we got 25 points for that. Take bar. There we go. Okay, now let's look at our score. Our score is now 50 out of 100. Nice. So I'm going to make a function real quick for unlocking that um, that chest. So let me go to the, I'm going to put the, just for the fun, I'm going to put the crown inside the chest. Thought I had a, I'm losing my brain. Apparently I turned the thing into a sandwich. Okay, I don't know. Let me add, uh, I'll add an object here, uh, and I'm going to call it chest, and I'm going to put it in the, uh, in room one, and I'm going to make it a container, and it's going to be openable, lockable, and locked. And um, then let's take the crown and put it in the chest and let's save this. Okay, so now I need to make a sentence for un or function for unlocking the chest. Unlock chest, okay. Oh, look, containers. Unlock a container with a key or tool. Nice, object of the container, the chest. Object of the key, the key. There you go, yes. Yes. Nice. There we go. Take crown. Nice. Oh, because the crown's not portable. Did I thought I thought I fixed that. All right. Okay. So um, now we wanted we wanted points for unlocking the chest. Same thing. Let's go back to our event, and we're going to. Right click and say scoring system award points for unlocking something. There we go. What does they get? What do they get points for unlocking the chest? Awesome. How many points does the player get? Twenty five. Okay. And the same thing. It's checking is the ch is the chest unlocked? If it is, set that variable to one. If that variable is one, add twenty five to the score. Unlock the chest. Okay. Now let's we'll check our variables here. Uh, okay, nice. Take the crown. Wear the crown. Nice. Let's look at our variables. And uh, we can see that we've got points for wearing the crown. Take the bar. Bars. Oops. Dump out our variables. Okay, so we can see now uh, we should have a score of 75. Score of 75. Nice. All right. So then we'll do that final thing, which is uh, eating the cheeseburger. You're, no, the cheeseburger sandwich. There's a sandwich. All right. So the game does not really have any concept of eating. You have to build that into the game. So I'm going to make a function called eat sandwich. Yes, there also there is a, please tell me I spelled sandwich wrong. 
No, there we go. Eat sandwich. Okay. Food and drink. Eat something and it's gone. All right. We eat this thing and it disappears. Great. What does the player eat? The sandwich. Awesome. Um, would you like me to add that sentence for you? Yes. Um, so, oh, look at this. There's a, the snippet added a variable for us called sandwich eaten that we can use to track if the sandwich has been eaten or not. But let's say we didn't have this variable. What we could do is go here and add a variable. We need to add a variable to track whether the player has done the thing that we're trying to keep track of. So now fortunately Lantern added one for us called sandwich eaten, but most of these snippets were not, will not. So let's say you use the snippet for um, you know, shooting an enemy or you know, whatever. Um, it is not going to add the variable. So you need to, in your function, when the player does something that gives them points, you need to set a variable to one. So go to your value, variables tab, add the variable with a default value of zero, and then in your function that carries out that action, set that variable to one. Then you can do the same thing. Let's go to our score here. And score system, award points for something not listed. Okay, what variable tracks if the player has done the required thing? Wasn't it sandwich eaten or something? Sandwich eaten. How many points does the player get? 25. Okay, so if sandwich eaten is equal to one, then we're gonna give the player 25 points. Uh, let's double check that as the variable. We have sandwich eaten, yes. So when the player eats the sandwich, we set that variable to one. In our event, we check it. So now I should be able to save this, test this, and where's the sandwich? Is it in my inventory? No, the sandwich. There's a sandwich on the ground, pig sandwich. Okay, see, notice there's a variable called sandwich eaten that the snippet added for us. But if we the snippet doesn't add that, then you have to go add it yourself. You eat the sandwich. Oh, look, the sandwich is gone. Let's look at our variables. Uh, the sandwich eaten variable has been set to one. And our code says if the sandwich eaten variable has been set to one, add 25 to our score. So there we go. There is, that is, that is one way to do scoring. This is not the only way. The thing I don't like about this is that the player doesn't necessarily, they're not getting indications that their score has gone up or uh, up or down, but that's kind of a design decision. Somehow I, I kind of, if I were playing this on the Apple computer, I wouldn't mind it. I think this is great. It's fine for the Apple computer because you've got that status bar at the top that shows you your score uh, and all the other platforms do. It's just in the little test window, you're not getting an indication if you're making progress in the game because the game isn't telling you and you can't actually see the score. So, there, but there you go. There's how to make a simple score system using an event. The trick is you just, at the beginning of the event, set your score to zero. And then, in, you ha and then use variables to keep track of, has the player done the things that they're supposed to get points for? If those variables are true, then you add the required number of points and may just make sure that your points add up to 25 and you will be all set. And Bessie is whining at me. Okay, so that, which means this video is now over. But there you go. There's how to make a simple score system um, using Lantern and Snippets.